down, down the island, you know, we kept losing our stuff for the storm. I mean, it was just, it was eroding faster and faster and faster, and it, it wasn't home anymore. It was time to move on. It was time to close that chapter of our life and start the next one. I'm Travis Dordor. I'm a commercial fisherman in Cameron. I shrimp and I oyster. My story is getting out, and people are starting to see that this is isn't as safe and as clean as they thought it was. We're here in Cameron Parish right now because uh, behind me is Venture Global Calcasieu Pass LNG facility. Um, but next door to it, they Venture Global also wants to build CP2 LNG directly across the river. Another company called Commonwealth LNG. Uh, next to door to that one is G2 LNG and that's, so that's four LNG facilities right here at the mouth of the river in a place that just two years ago experienced category four hurricanes back to back followed by a winter storm Yuri followed by a random flooding in May um, the, so the impacts of climate change are felt directly here and at the same time this is the place where these companies want to continue exacerbating climate change by pumping greenhouse gas, millions and millions of tons of greenhouse gases every year into the environment. Uh, my home is in Sulphur, Louisiana. And um, as you can see, we're surrounded by industry, uh, several oil and gas facilities, a uh, couple LNG facilities, but we have several projects that are proposed to come here. Right now, where I live, um, there's Westlake Chemical, Indorama, uh, Sassol, PPG, Phillips 66, but then we have projects like Driftwood LNG and Commonwealth LNG. On top of all of the industry that we're surrounded by, we also have a lot of other issues that our community is facing because they're still recovering from hurricanes and storms that we've had in the last two years. It's the belly of the beast because all that's happening in terms of petrochemical expansions, plastics, you name it, it's happening here in Port Arthur. If you're talking about hydrogen hubs, these plants use and consume hydrogen, it's here. If you're talking about carbon sequestration and storage, Big Hill Strategic Petroleum Reserve is just down the street here. And guess what? It's happening here. If you talk about LNG, we have two LNGs and a third one trying to come into this area. Again, Port Arthur. And then you have oil exports with the um, products pipeline that wants to take crude oil from America and ship to Europe and other parts of the world. And it's going to go through Port Arthur and into Louisiana and then out into the Gulf of Mexico, once again, Port Arthur. So we have to deal with all of that. And we're dealing with the aftermath of 12 decades of environmental industrial pollution caused by the petrochemical industry. So I, I have the report at home from the Texas Department of State Health and it clearly states, you know, there's seven types of cancer and it names the cancers that are higher than to be expected right here in southern Brazoria County. Um, and of all things, Dow Chemical about 10 years ago built our own cancer center just about 10 miles away in Lake Jackson, Texas. So, you know, it, I don't understand why these companies, they could prevent a lot of this emissions and cancers and health problems and breathing problems, but instead they build a cancer center, you know, and only, you can only go there if you have really good insurance um, to get cancer treatment. There's a lot of people that have premature heart issues and, and deaths because of the particles and stuff in the air. I always talk about, you know, here we have methane, uh, carbon and then we have all benzene it's like a big chemical soup around here that we all breathe in every day every day you can see that tanker loading over there you saw the tanker going through the noise pollution from it the light pollution at night the air pollution when they're flaring uh, they've had several releases over there when they're bringing that South Tank into service. They didn't follow their own procedures and their people. They, there, there was an investigation and they said, well, we didn't follow our procedures and our control equipment didn't work like it was supposed to. And they flared, I think it was 700 million cubic feet of methane that just went out that was supposed to go through the flare. It never did. It was just released to the atmosphere. To me, this one is too much. 
It's too close to me. We don't like it. It's noisy. I mean, they're, but they're flaring every night. If there's even a 1% chance that this can explode, that's too high of a risk for me and my, my, my two kids and my wife. You know, even a 1% chance. And they do blow. On June the 8th, they had a terrible explosion. They had a rupture in a pipeline right in between two of these gigantic LNG ships. It caused a 450 foot high vapor cloud to go up and explode. And then they had a fire after that that they had to put out. When the ships are over here, gigantic LNG ships, normally when they're open, there's always two at a time loading. And they are so dangerous when they're fully loaded. So can you imagine when these fully loaded LNG ships would pull up to an import facility in Europe? how dangerous those ships are. Um, if we continue to invest in these, these suicidal projects, um, I mean, uh, our, our grandchildren and, and generations to come will, will suffer. We all have arrived at this point on the backs of so many ancestors and so many generations to get to right here where we are today. And we have kicked a can down the road so long that the road is running out. And so I, I would just implore all the banks to, to not invest in fossil fuels infrastructure that is gonna basically destroy a livable planet.